like everyone to stand up, please. Stand up. Stand up. Get out of your seats. Get out of your seats. Raise your hands above your head. Stretch. Stretch to the skies. Feel good. Move your fingers. Move your fingers. Stretch. Stretch. Ugh, grab them. Pull. Pull. Raise up to the heavens. All right. Now sit back down. Sit back down. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> that feel good? They still look good. I heard that. A speaker somewhere told me you needed to get up. We sit too much. Thank you, Peter, for that. Well, that was excellent information. And it's very true. It's very true. Uh, we do need to get up. We need to move. We need to continue to move forward. A lot of times people get stuck. Why do they get stuck? What is keeping people stuck? What are your fears? Do you have fear? What are your fears? People have fears of all different types. People have personal fears. Fear of relationships. Fear of flying. Fear of new situations. Maybe someone had a fear, signed up for this meetup today, and had a fear of walking into this building, not knowing what was going to be here. That's a fear. What other fears are out there? In business, there are a lot of fears. But here's an interesting thing about fear, is that fear is based on a future event. Fear is based on a fear. Unless someone's holding a knife to my neck, or a gun in my back, the fear that I'm thinking about is something that is going to happen. And I put all these ideas in my head. What's going to happen? I think of the worst case scenario. I think of the best case scenario. I think of maybe in the middle scenario. And then what happens, and who has this happened to, after all that emotion, that draining energy that you've used, you go into that situation and it was nothing that you even thought of. Or the fear was a lot less than the actual reality. And that happens all the time. What fears do you have? People have fears of being liked. I want to be liked, right? People have fear of public speaking, getting up and talking. I get a fear every time I get up to speak. I call it a healthy anxiety. All right, I know it's coming up, I know it's coming up. But I deal with that fear. I've learned from that fear. I think a lot of our fears are based in our past. Something that has occurred in our past that creates that fear that we're looking at. What are the fears that we have? Fears in relationships, fears in speaking, fears of death. Who, who fears death? I heard a statistic, 100% of us will die. <laughs> I heard that today, wow. I like Woody Allen's take on death. He doesn't fear death at all, just as long as he's not there when it occurs. <laughs> so what are your fears? Are they based in reality or the perception of an unknown quality, quantity? Two weeks ago, I was running a meeting and Dr. Peter Vajda was talking about fear. And he brought up some great questions about fear. And four questions that resonated with me were when you have fear, here's some things you have to think about. Those four questions were, what will happen if I take action? If you have that fear, what will happen if I take action? Second question is, what won't happen if I take action? These are important. These are important. You have to look at that fear and look at the reality. What is the actual reality? Another question he had is, what will happen if I don't take action? And the last question is, what won't happen if I don't take action? I think a lot of fear is based on fear of failure. People are afraid to move forward. There's an obstacle in front of us and we rationalize to ourselves and we make it okay not to do it. But when it's actually fear that's holding us back, that there's a brick wall there holding us back, we have to delve into our past and delve into why that has taken hold of us. 
And at that meeting, I had participation. I like to have participation. And one person got up and talked about the fear of moving. The place he was born in, grew up in, earned his living in, and his wife came to him one day and said, I want to move, 1,000 miles away, I want to move. There's a fear years ago when I moved here. I grew up in New York, I lived in New York, I was raised in New York, I, my business was there, everybody knew me, I knew everybody, and we decided to move. What was the fear? It's the fear of the unknown. I know what my life looks like now, I don't know what it's gonna look like when I move. There's a fear there. People sometimes cannot overcome that fear. Someone else got up and talked about the fear of asking a stupid question. I think we've all had that in class. Afraid to ask the question. And what's interesting and what he shared was that he finally had the nerve to ask the question and he realized nobody else knew the answer. And I think as adults, a lot of adults are afraid to ask that question because they don't want to sound, I hate to use the word stupid, but I think that's what people feel. I don't want to sound stupid. There are no stupid questions. If you don't know the answer, you have to ask. How are you going to move forward? How are you going to get better? You have to ask the questions. And someone else gave a great, a great uh, 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 example also, and this has occurred to me in my past. The fear of giving a proposal. The fear of giving a proposal. That happened to me as a contractor. I would always look at the pricing. I'd say, all right, is that too expensive? Are they gonna pay for this? Can I reduce my cost here? You know, if you don't have a product, if you don't have a product that is, is a retail value and maybe a wholesale, a little bit wiggle room, but when you're selling yourself and it's an hour and you want $150 an hour, all of a sudden, you know, you start to think, all right, am I that valuable? I gotta tell you something. You are all that valuable. I learned that years ago from a mentor I had because I struggled with that. And I would go into his office, he had a paint supply store, and his name was Cliff, great guy, and he gave me a lot of great mentoring information. And I would bring in proposals, and I'd struggle with it. And he told me, he said, what do you think you're worth? That you're worth this. I said, well, I think I'm worth more. He goes, then change it and put it down there. You are worth more if that's what you believe. Don't reduce your value. Don't reduce your value. You have to have value in yourself. And if people don't want to buy your value, guess what? There's someone else out there who will. Because your value starts with you not with someone who has a perceived sense of your value. Your success is dependent on overcoming your fears. You need to head, face them head on. You need to get through the obstacle, the blockage, look back in your life because everything in our past is just education for us to succeed in our future. Napoleon said it best, who, he who fears being conquered is sure of defeat. You go into a situation with fear, feeling defeated, what's the odds of success? Pretty limiting. So I suggest embrace your fears. Walk through that door. Try new things. Step out of your comfort zone and you're going to go to places that you never thought you could. Thank you very much.